Well, hello there. And welcome to a special edition behind the scenes Skellyverse video. Today, we are going to look at the process of creating a cinematic intro for our Minecraft Let's Play series within the Skellyverse. We're going to look at the process from start to finish, from storyboarding to recording replay footage, editing that, recording some green screen stuff with our narrator puppet, recording the music, a few other bits and bobs, and then we're going to bring it all together into Premiere Pro. The goal is to end up with a 30 second or so intro video that we can run in our videos as a nice transition point and as a sort of a way to brand our series overall. Now. I'm not going to go too in depth in any one particular part, but I wanted to showcase the overall process and hopefully inspire you to create one for your own series or just give you some ideas you can apply to your own creative projects. At the very least, just go work on some art. It is important to art daily. I think a doctor probably said that or maybe maybe it was that bat or a scientist or something. Anyway, if you're watching this, you probably are already aware of the Skellyverse, where we are right now. But if not, it is a survival multiplayer Minecraft server Let's Play series that I've been posting on YouTube for uh, the past few years or so. Now, over time, I've been steadily trying to increase the production value of my videos. And as a part of that effort, I came up with a standard intro that I play in most videos as a transition from the introduction to the main content. For reference, here is what the existing intro video looks like. Not bad past me. It does a pretty good job of setting the tone and introducing a bit of the backstory and all that kind of stuff, but I think we can do better. The old intro works great, but lately I've been wanting to redo a few of the parts and update some things and just generally freshen it up. So that's the journey we're going on today, including this bat, apparently. Anywho, without further ado, let's get started. Now, as you can see with your human eyes, we are already on the server, as I mentioned, and we're at the build that I want to use for the intro. This is a oh, wrong way. This is actually the same build. This is the crypt underneath the graveyard that you just saw. So if we go up top here and take a gander. OK, very good. You can see we're in the, the little crypty kajigger thing here and it is daytime. Very nice. Beautiful. Here you go. Looks great. The old clip was recorded in an earlier version. We didn't have quite as nice shaders. I mean, look, we got parallax occlusion mapping textures which is what gives it that depth and everything. And we also now are recording in 2K as opposed to 1080. So overall, it was due for a refreshing. Essentially, all of that combined means we have to re-record the replay footage. Now, before we get into that, though, let's take a peek at the storyboard. First step of any good creative project is you kind of got to write out what it is that you want to do. And that is generally called storyboarding. So here's what we want to do. We're going to start in the crypt below where we just were, we're going to sync the ooh sound, which you heard at the beginning of the music. We're keeping that part. We're going to sync that to a camera move. We're going to zoom in on the narrator puppet who's going to come up from behind that altar. Then uh, he's going to start to summon me, good old scaly tone. And then we're going to transition above ground. Not sure exactly how yet. And then we're going to watch me dig out of this grave over here, which is the same same grave we did in the original intro. Then we're going to probably do some other stuff. Maybe maybe we will grab Justice here, my iconic netherite hoe. And then, you know, follow me out of the, the graveyard with the spooky laugh and everything like, like we did before. And then roll the logo. So the first thing we have to tackle here is the replay recording. Now, if you're not already familiar with that, replay is a Minecraft mod that allows you to create cinematic videos of your Minecraft world. And in our case, I want to have just a little bit more control over the environment. So we're going to actually log off of the server and go into a copy of the Skellyverse that I have saved locally. So we can manipulate things like the time of day or the weather. We're just going to create a mode if we need to, you know, check things out, whatever we got to do. That's going to make things easier easier on us. OK, so let's head over there. Boom, we're back and we're in creative mode. In fact, let's go in spectator mode and kind of show you what's going on here. So here is the above ground area here where we just were on the actual server, though now we're in a local copy of the world so we can do whatever we want. We have God powers and you can see here's where we go down into the crypt. OK, I'm thinking what I want to do is kind of start 
maybe like somewhere up here. And then we're going to fade in. We're going to push to this altar. Narrator is going to pop up, start summoning. And then as the magic happens, we're going to make our way up. Now, I'm not sure yet if we want to go actually like trace the path of the stairs because that gets a little tricky in replay. We may just go through the ground, but whatever we do, we're going to end up up here. We're going to watch old Skeletone dig out of this dirt here and then follow him out of the graveyard and onto his journey. Uh, there's a couple things we want to do. Step one, we're going to game rule do daylight cycle false game rule do mobs spawning false and game rule what is it do weather cycle false okay so these three things are flags you can set if you have creative access to the game this first one means that the daylight the time is not going to change and we're not going to spawn mobs and we're not going to do weather. That's going to help us making sure that everything is kind of uh, set statically exactly where we want it to be. So we want this to be nighttime. We're going to change the clock around a little bit. Time set. I don't know. Let's try midnight. So that's 18,000. I'm just going to lower the sun in the sky until I get to where I want it to be. That's kind of nice. Gives us a little bit of uh, light in the background. That might look kind of cool. When we get the moon raising up over there, what happens if we go to like 15,000? Right, the moon's higher. Sun is completely gone. Do like the lens flare from the moon. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's pretty nice, but that's still a little bright. Okay. I think I've settled on 15,500. And the reason is we're going to be over here watching me dig out of this grave. And I kind of want the moon in the background. I think that'll look pretty nice. So I think we'll go with that. All right, so let's head back down and let us start the replay. So when you record replay, what happens is the mod records everything in the background. So you can then position the camera wherever you want it in the world, the, at least the part of the world that's loaded. So you can have like a cinematic camera follow your character around, or you can record a time lapse of a build. People use it for that all the time. We are going to use it to create our cinematic intro. All we really have to do is get our character in the world where we want them to be. Let's get us in the right place and then we will start the recording. Okay, so we need to set ourselves up here before we start our replay recording. And what we're going to do is we're going to be digging out of this block here, but we also want to be able to find Justice, our trademark hoe. And I think what we're going to do is place him in an invisible item frame right here. Cool. Oh, it is kind of floating midair, but you know what? It's very magical. Very magical. I love it. Okay. Clear the rest of this crap out of our inventory. We don't need any of these things necessarily. So we need to dig down a couple spaces so that we have some space here. And then we need to put this back. And then what we're going to do is grab the dirt and we're going to switch out of it. So this part requires a little bit of acting. Okay. Ooh, okay. Here we go. Okay. And then we will put ourselves into survival mode and we'll start recording. Okay. So it's recording. So right now you have to imagine the camera's down underneath in the crypt doing all its stuff. Uh, looking at the narrator, he's doing the summoning and then we're going up the stairs. Okay. Then we start digging and we get our dirt block, put that down there, there, we look around, grab justice and then we head out of here. Okay. That might be pretty good. We'll stop the recording and we will check that out and see how it looks. I don't like that the item frame showed up there. Hmm. Wonder if there's a way around that. We'll have to look. We'll have to look and replay. Okay. Our file is good. Pop into replay. It's 33 seconds. That's about how long we want it to be. Now, if you've never used replay before, this is not a tutorial to tell you how to do it. There's tons of those on the old internet, but I will go through what we're doing here. So we're looking for about a 30 second spot. So that's going to be about there. We do want to go kind of in real time. Um, so we're going to actually go back to the beginning of our timeline. And if you've ever done anything with keyframes, like in Premiere Pro, After Effects, or really any creative editing software, keyframing is usually an option. And that's the same thing here. We can set a camera position and we can set a time. At the beginning, uh, we want our time to be at the beginning, right? We want the start of our camera to be here. And then, woo, 
Ooh, imagine that's going on there. So we're gonna actually pan down and in to about here, I guess. And we can check this in just a second. We wanna get kind of low. Let's try here. See how that camera move looks. Yeah, that's pretty good. So warm, and then the narrator pops out. Okay, so I actually went back and recorded a couple other replays. I made some changes. I do not like having the item frame there because the item frame shows up after you take the item out of it. And that looks awkward and weird, especially since it's invisible. So we have changed to a barrel and inside the barrel is Justice the hoe. Now, the next thing we wanna do is I'm actually, this time I'm going to find exactly where we start digging from the very start so that we know so it's right about 14 seconds, okay? So we're gonna add our marker there. Dig, good, there, and we've emerged, okay? So that's was approximately here, I guess. Emerge! We're gonna redo this. Now we could import the frames from the other replay, but honestly, we don't need to. We can just redo this. So let me just shedazzle all this into place here and then uh, we'll see how it looks. Okay, I am pretty satisfied with that. Uh, I may tweak it a little bit more, but I think we're pretty much done. All we have to do is just render it and we will get a finished video and then we can move on to the next step. Perfect. Okay, next up, we need some music for our intro. So here we are in Reaper, which is a DAW or digital audio workstation. And a DAW is just a program that allows you to record and mix audio. And in our case here, we have a bunch of digital instruments over on the left, but later we will be recording some vocal stuff in here as well. Now this is actually the original song from the old intro. And we just wanna make a few tweaks here and there. And I think I wanna redo the drums at the very least, but we'll see where we go. So let me show you around. Now you can see we have multiple tracks and each track is a separate recording or instrument. We have an organ. Yep, great organ. Uh, we got a timpani drum track down here. This one, timpani. Boom. Wonderful. And we have our normal drum track, which... Yeah, which we will focus on here in a minute. And we have one down here labeled voice, which is still a virtual instrument just of a choir. Now these all run through a virtual instrument called Philharmonic, you can see here, and it just allows you to load up different sound patches and play them through a MIDI keyboard, which is what we've done. So we've got the basses loaded up, an organ, we have a harpsichord, which I don't think we used. You can play with your mouse on the built-in keyboard, but you can also play it with the keyboard, which I have in the real world off screen. But anyway, this voice is actually probably my favorite part. This is heavily inspired by the intro music from a show called Tales from the Crypt. And if you've ever seen that, there's this haunting choir piece that starts the song as they kind of go down the staircase, which is what I wanted to replicate. So I took this choir and applied a pitch bend, which is just this little wheel over here. So if you play a note and then bend the wheel, it'll gradually change the pitch. Just thought that was really cool. Anyways, first up, I think we wanna re-record the drums. Now, I like this drum part, but it's a bit busy and it's also kind of static. I'd like a bit more movement around the drum kit and more variance in the beat. So we'll work on that first. Now you can play drum parts on the keyboard, but in this case, since I'm a drummer and I have an electronic drum set, we can actually just play what I want and that'll be a lot easier. All right, we're gonna copy over everything except for the drum part and then we will play the drums to it and try and come up with what we want for our end result. And paste, okay, so we have our intro now just without the drums. Cool, okay, so let's get to playing. Okie doke, that took a few tries, but we now have our new drum part. Uh, we went with a bit more of a traditional drum beat, also tried to work in some tom rolls in this section over here, and tried to vary up the pattern a little bit. I am pleased with it. 
but I would like to make a few tweaks. And awesomely, since this is all digital, we can do some really cool things if we need to. So first up, uh, the very if we actually drill into this, zoom in a bit. All right, this is where our beat starts. These are the MIDI notes that were recorded from the electronic drum set. So you can see it starts here with, I uh, believe, a bass drum and a crash. Yeah. Psh. Um, this crash though, I think it, this particular symbol sounds a little bit weak. So I want to reinforce that a little bit. And we're actually just going to go in and add a second symbol over the top, I think. So let's find another, it's a pretty good one. Ooh, now that's nice and loud. Let's pop that in there, layer it, and see what that sounds like. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's got a bit more punch. Okay. And then the other thing that I noted I kind of want to fix is when we get into this tom roll section over here. This is the end of the previous section. We do a fill into this roll section right here. I think I want to add in something else here. Ooh, maybe a china. No. Maybe a louder china. Oh, that was just a ding. Actually, I, I kind of like that. Maybe we keep it like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm okay with that. Okay, good deal. I think this will work. I don't think I actually want to add anything else here, so I think we're done, at least for now. The way I usually work in these circumstances is that I'll get it to the point where I like it and then move on, fully realizing that we may need to go back and adjust when I'm kind of putting everything together for the finished product. You know, maybe something isn't lining up or something needs to be tweaked, but as you can see, we can easily just come back and edit. So, moving on. All right, so up next, we want to record our summoning curse. So our narrator puppet is going to pop up from behind the altar and cast a spell that summons old scaly tone. So once again, we want to work smarter, not harder. This is actually a project that I recorded for the previous episode where I used some dark magic to summon a bridge. Now, it was a lot of fun to record this, and I think I actually spent more time on this than anything else in the episode, even though it was only a very small part in the finished project. So often tis thus in labors of love. But, as I said, we want to work SMRT. I am smart. SMRT. I mean, S-M-A-R-R-T. So we're going to reuse a lot of this, which I think actually makes sense from a world building perspective. Magic will usually only work in very specific ways, right? So this is kind of our starting template for in-universe magic spells. So let me show you around. Once again, we have a lot of digital instruments here. And in this case, instead of going through Philharmonic, we're going through Contact, which is a similar concept. We load up patches that make up our different sounds and then we play them on our keyboard. So let's check out what we have. We've got, uh, actually, I'm gonna close out of this window, but you can kind of see, select what you want, throw it in the patches, great. We have actually an electric train set, which is weird, but I really like the way this sounds. That's the very beginning part that you hear, and it's just an electric train set with some other weird sounds around it. We also have this thing called Ethereal Earth, which is another contact plugin. It's sort of just like Ethereal soundscape stuff, which I think sounds pretty cool. Adds a little background interest. And then we have a strings part for the, the punchy bit when the summoning actually happens. Very cool. We also have, actually, this is a different virtual plugin called Massive. We use that for a bit of a chaos sound. Adds a little bit of chaos in the background. And then at the bottom down here, we have some actual live recorded vocals, which have been mixed and have had effects added to make them very, very spooky. The main track here, uh, oh man, well, just listen. <laughs> yeah, uh, man, I don't even know how to describe how I make this kind of sound with my voice. It's kind of like uh, Tuven throat singing, if you're familiar with that, and also kind of like growls that you would put in a metal song. So if I take the effects off, you can hear it very plainly. Effects is mostly just reverb. Ooh, it's so spooky. Man, I love it. Uh, but the content here is actually just some Latin. And I use Google Translate for it because Latin seems to be kind of the sweet spot for languages when it comes to the occult or witchcraft or whatever you want to call it. So pretty much standard for spells. Plus, it sounds cool. So what we want to do 
is, like I said, take a lot of this stuff that we already have here, minus the vocals, and we'll copy that over. And then we will figure out our new summoning curse and then re-record these bits. So let's head over to Google Translate and figure out exactly what we want to say. OK, if you go to Google Translate, you can basically select, yeah, I want to be in English and I want to translate it to Latin. So if we say something like, um, please bring me a cool skeleton friend like that, then it becomes this. And we can actually have it speak and that will help us understand how this is supposed to be pronounced. Dami frigidus o seus amicus. Dami frigidus o seus amicus. Hmm, I kind of want it to be longer. I like that. It's got some cool sound and words in it, but uh, let's see what else we can come up with here. OK, slight alteration here. I've changed cool to amazing because I noticed it was saying like frigidum, which I think essentially just means I was saying cool as in like temperature cool, which is not what I was wanting. So I changed it to amazing. It doesn't really matter if it's, you know, literal or accurate or whatever. No one's going to look this up. I think we're good with this. I like the way this sounds. So that's what we're going to record. All right. Here we go. Let's do it again. A little bit. Oh, yeah, gotta coat the throat. Oh, God. Whew, all right, spooky vocals completed. And uh, boy, that takes a lot out of the old voice doing that uh, throat, throat singing stuff. But we're done now. We have the main track, this is the deep part. And then we have two whispers panned left and right to kind of expand out the sound stage. Now, what I think I'm going to do, oh, by the way, if you want to hear this without effects, it's spooky even without the effects. I do like the effects on the we actually have a compressor and then a bit of EQ and then ROM, which is this really cool reverb processor, which I love the sound of. This. And that's the same thing's going on with the whispers. If you're curious about the effects chain there, what I think I want to do is I'm going to export this and then I'm also going to do another export where I cut out that last phrase that we added on, just in case we need a shorter version, then we can kind of fade this out and merge it into the music part that's going to be coming up there. So we'll have two options going forward. OK, here we are in green screen land with our puppet. I apologize that only half of my face is visible, but the idea here is that we get mostly the puppet on the green screen, which, by the way, this puppet was made by a company called No Strings Puppet Works, which I will put a link in the description. They're very, very cool puppets. Go to the website, check it out. Very, very cool. Ah, viewer. So this is our narrator character. He shows up in pretty much every episode now, either introducing the episode or doing something spooky or evil. Needs a little bit of help with his hair. Got to get a hairstylist. For what we're doing here, we're not actually recording any audio. We're just recording some movement. And so we got our green screen in the background and we're ready to go. So what we want to happen is for our narrator to blah, emerge from behind the altar and then start summoning. I wish I had three hands so that I could move this other arm. I don't know if maybe I can do both at once. Might be awkward. Yeah, like that's what I want. All right, so maybe we'll try that. So I'll just go through and try and do what I think will work here. Emerge from the bottom and then that. Obviously, we're going to chrome out the background and we're going to crop out the stupid head over here. So let's get this done. We don't want them to go off screen, though. That's going to cause some weird clipping. So I'm going to actually move my butt over, get them more in the center. Yeah, I think that'll work better. All right, let's try this again. OK, I think that'll do it. All right. So now that we have all of our constituent parts, we're going to go into Premiere Pro here and we're going to try and throw it all together. So we've got our replay footage that we recorded. We have our music track. We have our two curses, which we'll put on a separate track, probably. And here's the shorter one in case we need to use one or the other. Yeah, there's our intro music. And here is our narrator green screen footage, which we do not actually need a lot of this. So I'm going to unlink it. Get rid of all the audio tracks because that's not going to be useful. Oh, yeah. See, when we went to the middle, that's uh, was a much better choice. So we'd be from here. Here's one take. Comes up. Bu -bu 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 summon. 
And then going back down, we'll split it there. And then another take starts like right here. Going up, blah, 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 summon, summon, summon. And we probably won't even need all of that. So there's our two bits, okay? Next, what we wanna do is get our ultra key effect here and start keying him out. Now there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube for this, so I'm not gonna go too in depth. I'll probably just cut around this part, but essentially you pick your background color. I'm gonna pick this in between color up here, and then you can see your, your alpha channel. So then you have white bits for what shows up and the dark bits for what doesn't. And obviously I'm gonna crop this out, but you can change your transparency. You can see now we're losing part of his face. You can modify the highlights, get rid of some of that. So I'm gonna play around with this until we get what we're looking for. First, actually what we wanna do, go in our opacity layer and kind of just select our subject. Yeah, so we don't have to worry about anything else outside of that. Okay, I'm gonna tweak this and I'll be right back. Now I am definitely not the best one to watch for how to use this ultra key chroma effect. I just kind of mess around until it feels right. But usually what happens is you can tweak it. So see the black parts in the middle of the shirt and the head, those are actually gonna be transparent, which is what we don't want. But if we start to move out of the shadow, you can see in the corner down there, now we're getting some of the shadow from the green screen to where it's not evenly lit. I really should try better and harder to light that up evenly, but whatever, it works for the most part. So we're gonna just try and keep tweaking here, but I just want to point that out. That's usually the balancing act and we can use pedestal to sort of blank out this other side too. So keep working on this. Okay, not bad. We did a little bit here in the mat cleanup section with the help of the choke and the soften. We can actually get rid of the armature there for the arm and kind of choke that out and then soften up the edges a little bit. We have a little bit of uh, missing data here, but I don't think you'll really notice in the grand scheme of things, especially since this is going to be kind of smaller and kind of down in a, in a different area. Whatever we do to this clip, we're just gonna copy it over to this one so that we don't have to do too much work. And we're gonna comp him on top over here. Okay, not too shabby. So the color's looking pretty good. Let's see where we, we actually need him. So we're gonna mark this intro, mute that so it's not super loud. All right, so we want this to be as static as possible to make it easier on us. So we're gonna start like here, mark, and then... We may even go from this to cut directly to the other direction, just to avoid having to do too much work. Cause when the camera moves, we would have to move him as well. So we want to avoid that probably to there. And he's actually going to pop up and then summon, summon, summon. And then, yeah, I think we will cut maybe from there to like here. So we would actually like cut this out. Does that look weird? No, actually that looks okay. A little bit of cheat there. Okay, so rah, and then blah, 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 blah. And obviously he is also too big. Oh, that's the other thing. Did we want to maybe, yeah, we'll make him a little warmer over here just so that he matches the background a little better. And then let us position him more where we want him to be. Seems pretty small. Pretty good though. I mean, that's essentially what we want. Maybe we zoom in. Suppose that we scale this. Yeah, I like that a little better. Yeah, so what we're gonna do, copy, go over to this guy, paste attributes, motion, uh, and ultra key and lumetry. Also opacity, cause that will get us our mask. Ah, perfect. Okay, we have the technology, we can AB this. Option one, blah, blah, blah. Option two, Blah, blah, blah. Hmm, yeah. I definitely like this one better. He's got a bit of like that hair flip. So we're gonna get rid of that one. And then the other thing I think I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna speed this up. Let's try 125% for now. That'll get him into the summoning a little faster. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, and then we actually wanna stop there. But now we just need to fix him up a little bit more and tweak where he is. So I'm gonna do that off camera because that's a very fiddly process here. I'm gonna go through here and mess with this mask a little bit and maybe create some keyframes so that it changes and moves as we need it to. Looking pretty good though, looking pretty good. All right, give me a minute. Okay, a long time later and I have something that I think works. So if we just play this, 
Ah, there he is. He pops out of there. One change instead of keyframing the mask, actually keyframed position because the mask is kind of static on the bottom. And really, with the camera moving the way that it does, we should really be modifying his position and not how much of him is cropped out, if that makes sense. We have all the keyframes for our position. So he slides ever so gently along with the camera. Also, decrease the size a little bit because his arm was kind of sticking out over here. And when he first pops out, it looks a little bit weird. Still a little bit weird, but I don't think it's as noticeable. The hand was kind of over here before, so it's like, what's it coming out from behind of? Nothing. So now it's actually coming out from behind the altar. Yeah, I'm OK with that. OK, now we need to do a little bit of lining up of the sounds here. So we'll turn this back on. Kind of want the big impact of the music to happen when I dig out of the ground. So we'll put that about there and then this can go about here and then we may need a crossfade. But let's see what we have so far. Ooh, that's way off. Okay, we need to cut out a lot of this intro. Okay, we've grabbed some assets from our old intro comp, notably this blah sound when I climb out of the grave here. I want to get this somewhat finished for the video so you can see the process, but that does not mean this will be the final product. I may go back and tweak things before I actually put this into production. So be that as may, that's uh, living there right now. And then at the very end, we have a laugh and we have our logo come up. And then we want that to fade out and that's going to fade out into the episode into us doing stuff. So let's fade that a little more gradually. There we go. Nice. OK, that is actually pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. It's got all the pieces I want. I may throw in maybe some effects here, like some magic going doodle -doo 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 -doo. But that may come later and probably won't have that done in time for posting this video because I want to get this out there so y'all can see it. And, and really, this is just looking at the process and all the various pieces that go into creating something like this to maybe give you some ideas, inspire you to create something similar of your own. So that's what this has been. I hope you have enjoyed. And I guess really the final thing to to do is just to export this out and see how it looks. So go ahead, check out some of the videos on the channel. You'll see this popping into an episode sometime soon, maybe even next week. And I hope you stick around. We have a lot of fun like this here on the channel doing crazy, wacky things, both in video and music production and also just in Let's Play Gaming and the Skellyverse. So if this piqued your interest, check it out. There's tons of videos out there for you to watch. And hopefully someday you will see this on here in its final form if you stick around. But for now, let us view the final result. OK, running completely out of time here, but I just wanted to pop back in and say, yes, I did, in fact, just go back and kind of redo everything. So I even composed a new intro for this uh, using some basses and doing some stuff there, uh, some timpani, and we threw in some harpsichord. Wonderful, very fun to play and figure all of that out. But the new idea here is that there's a orchestral intro and then it gets a little quieter. This is where the summoning happens. And then we have our normal song. So we took that and then I redid the replay. These are actually redid several different takes of the replay, comped it all together with our narrator, added some special effects, which I'm still working on. But like I said, I want to get this out there and I'm about to post this video. So this is just a quick update to let you know that a bunch of stuff has changed. And basically you saw version one of this effort, but it was about the journey, not the destination. The destination comes later. So again, without further ado, enjoy the semifinal result. <laughs>